Matthew Williams here with a quick video to talk to you about Apple iPhones and why you shouldn't buy one like as if you don't already know this because maybe you aren't a retard maybe you aren't a fucking sheep maybe you aren't a fucking crippled dick spastic master you know um, but mm, a lot of people are unfortunately and they're prepared to spend through the fucking nose for an absolutely retarded crippled experience um, now, I personally rate Samsung, Samsung phones, because for the money you get top of the range processors, more processors than you get in an Apple phone. You get a higher resolution screen. You get more capacity life on your battery. And you get more performance all round. And as far as features go, you get all the features and the latest features and you don't get anything crippled and shut off and locked down and restricted like you do on Apple products Apple products are for fucking retards retards only yes but of course as we all know a lot of retards in business seem to earn lots of money so because they earn lots of money they want to spend it on stupid fucking rubbish but there we are as people say if they want to spend their money on stupid rubbish let them well yes but I just want to stop people that are actually sort of you know teetering on the edge of what should I get on wasting their money on a product where you can't change the battery where you can't fucking put a memory stick in it to expand its memory and you can't connect it to a normal computer to get your data on and off because it's not allowed yes you're not allowed to get your data on and off that device yes they don't want you doing that why one has to wonder but this is the Apple universe where unless you've got an Apple and you use Apple products to connect to it then you're not going into that device and your experience is extremely limited to what you can do so I say don't buy it now what they've um, what they've asked me is would I do a review of the new Apple iPhone X now though I could I could do a review on every single device that comes out and I could tell you the, the pros and the cons but what I'm going to teach you is how to review these things yourself okay it's quite simple Google is your friend even though they they're the, uh, they are the NSA Google technically is your friend in doing searches so what you do is you bring up Google and you type in what you're looking for information on so it's the iPhone XR okay and you see it starts to type in stuff now, I could type review but a review is a kind of hard to kind of gauge so what I do is I type in versus vs versus and then a phone that you're interested in like Samsung uh, S9 okay so there we are Samsung S9 then we hit enter and we get one device versus the other okay and uh, let's scroll down now phone arena is quite good let me let me click up phone arena so I'll bring that in a new new window okay um, and I'm gonna say no I don't want any I wanna opt out of all that crap thank you very much so here we are so the Galaxy <coughs> S9 they give it a similar rating in terms of sort of general overall they give it a similar, similar rating but let's have a look at let's just have a look at the general sort of specs now okay um, the S9 has a slightly smaller screen it's 5.8 versus 6.1 which is marginal is marginal but what is different is the resolution look down here the Samsung has 1440 versus only 828 pixels now it's almost half so that's half the resolution on the screen right and in the in the in the vertical range 2960 versus 1792 huh this is like half the resolution the screen is half the resolution so it's not a very good screen and you know 
the 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 apple is boasting that it has a retina screen retina retina is the best in the world retina is the best so how can retina be the best when it's half the resolution so where do these claims fall short okay and it says it's the best the best quality lcd screen in the world that's what apple say it said the best quality lcd screen in the world yeah that's right they they're probably telling the truth in terms of lcd an LCD is shit because Samsung uses Super AMOLED screens. Now, what's the difference, you might ask? Well, an LCD, you have to project the light through the screen from the back. You have to project light through the screen, which darkens the image to get your images. And Super AMOLED is every pixel on the screen actually projects its own light out of the pixel which makes it super bright. So guess what? Apple say that they have got the best quality LCD screen in the world, which is like saying, we have the best quality turd on the planet. It's still a turd, yeah? But Samsung are just saying, well, we've got the best polished diamond in the world, which it is. It's the best money can buy, Super AMOLED, yeah? And Retina at half resolution, which is dark, is not very good so Apple is shit okay so the screen to body ratio with the with the Samsung is 84 percent and the screen to body ratio is 79 percent so it's actually less screen for the phone so the Galaxy S9 actually has more screen on on the actual device so for all this bloody notch cutting out where they put the notch on the apple which which comes into the screen and everyone's complained about you know for doing that stupid design which apple got pulled over the coals about it it, it has less actual screen okay so um the only uh the only thing that the screen can say that it's got is it's got a oleophobic coating on the uh, Galaxy S9, which means basically that it's it's sprayed with a substance which will wear off, yeah, which is supposed to be anti-fingerprint, but that is a that's a spray-on coating. Now, how how long do you think a spray-on coating is going to last on a phone? You know, we all know that um, paint that goes on a phone, if they paint stuff on, it comes off, yeah. So how long do you think that screen coating is going to last? And that's the only feature it has which is actually of any note, right? That it has a uh, this spray on coating which nobody else bothers with because it's going to leave dirty marks on the screen when it starts to wear off yeah but the Samsung has HDR video support so it can play back HDR videos in full deep color yeah so the cameras are basically um, basically the same megapixels the 12 me megapixels okay and um, Okay, video recording wise, um, they pretty much match up in terms of they've got 4K, 2K, 720, but the Samsung Galaxy has 720 at 960 frames per second, which the Apple doesn't even have. So there we go. Okay, and another interesting feature is that the Samsung actually has the front camera, which faces you, the selfie camera, that has autofocus, whereas the Apple one doesn't have autofocus, it's just a fixed focus. The Samsung is even lighter than the Apple at coming in at 5.75 ounces, which is 163 grams, and the Apple is, is a heavier, heavier phone at 194 grams. Um, the Samsung is better rated for going underwater. It's got an IP68 rating, whereas the Apple only has an IP67, so it's not well as well rated as the Samsung. The, you know, as far as being able to open your phone is concerned, the Samsung has an iris scanner it has facial recognition and it has a fingerprint scanner whereas as we know the crappy iPhone system is only facial facial recognition and that has been shown not to work very well and this is where it really counts the processors the processors okay the Samsung has eight processors the Apple only has six processors there you go two more processors in the Samsung more powerful how much memory does it have to run the programs now this is critical 
you need to have lots of memory to run these newer programs. Well, the Samsung has four gigs of memory and the Apple only has three gigs of memory. Now we're starting to get into, oh my God, how shit can this phone be? Yes, it's true. And when it comes to extra storage expansion, well, if you pay through the nose, if you pay absolutely through the nose, you can get 256 gigs of storage on the Apple iPhone. Whereas, where internal storage is standard on the S9, 256 gigs. But you can put a memory stick in there. You can put one of the little memory sticks in and expand it up to 400 gigs of extra. So that's 600 gigs total you can have in the Samsung Galaxy S9 compared to the measly 256 that you can get in the iPhone 9. And remember I told you, remember I said that the Samsung weighed less? It weighs less. But guess what? It's got a bigger battery. It's got a 3000 mAh battery, 3000 milliamps. Well, the iPhone's only got 2.9 Two, you know, 2,900 milliamps. So there's, you know, a hundred extra milliamps and the phone, the Samsung is lighter. How does that happen? And that extra battery on the Samsung doesn't just give you a little bit of extra talk time. You get 31 hours on the Samsung versus 25 on the Apple. So the Apple is less efficient. It's a less efficient phone. It's even bigger, it's less efficient and it gives you five hours or six hours less talk time than the lighter Samsung so it's not as efficient. Bear in mind it hasn't even got as high a resolution screen so where is all this energy going in the iPhone? It's just going up in smoke. Rubbish. So in essence you would be a fucking retard spasmonaut fucking idiotic sheeple to buy a fucking iPhone for a stupid amount of money, knowing full well that in one year's time, Apple are probably going to do what they've done with their other phones recently and just turn the speed down on you through an update. They're going to turn the phone speed down. So your phone's going to turn into a dud in one year's time because they want you to buy the next one. So you want to go and buy Apple products? You're a fucking knob. Thanks very much for watching.